What this law is all about is very simple. It aims to prevent, curb, and punish four types of acts and activities that will endanger national security uh, of the country and also, of course, in Hong Kong. It only targets a very small minority of people who breach the law. Uh, at the same time, it will protect the overwhelming majority of Hong Kong citizens uh, in exercising their legitimate rights and freedoms. Uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, in the last few days, uh, I noticed, uh, you may dispute that, but I noticed that there has been an increasing appreciation of the positive effect of this national security legislation, particularly in restoring stability uh, in Hong Kong, as reflected by some of the market sentiments uh, in recent days. Surely, this is not doom and gloom for Hong Kong. I'm sure with the passage of time and efforts and, and, in fact, and the facts being laid out, uh, confidence will grow in one country, two systems, and in Hong Kong's future. Now, let me try to respond to several areas of concerns or unfounded allegations. Uh, allegation number one is uh, this law signifies the death of one country, two systems, or this very important principle is now being put in jeopardy. The answer from me is exactly the opposite. The national security law aims to affirm and improve the implementation of one country, two systems by addressing risks of undermining national security, which is a matter within the purview of the central government. Enacting national security legislation to protect sovereignty, territorial integrity, and unity is invariably the power and duty of the state in all countries. One country is the foundation of two systems, and this foundation will be seriously shaken if territorial integrity is being compromised and national security is put at risk. This is a red line which should be very familiar to many of us, and it should not be crossed. Given the escalating national security risks that we have seen since June last year, and the inability of the Hong Kong SAR, not just the government, but also the Legislative Council, to enact local legislation, the central government has to take resolute actions to safeguard the country's interest and to preserve one country, two systems. By the same token, uh, in discharging the central government's responsibility over national security, the national security law provides for the setting up of a CPG office on national security uh, in Hong Kong and reserving for the central government jurisdiction to handle offenses under very specified circumstances. And I believe these specified circumstances will be rare and through a very clear approval mechanism. These are all legitimate acts of the central government to fulfill the one country requirement under the principle of one country, two systems. The second allegation is uh, this piece of law is very draconian and it will undermine people's freedoms and spread fear amongst Hong Kong citizens. Well, first of all, I have not seen uh, uh, a, wide, a widespread of fears amongst uh, Hong Kong people in the last week. And my response is, um, uh, as some of the legal experts have commented in the past few days, this national security law is actually relatively mild uh, as far as uh, national security laws are concerned. First, its scope is very defined uh, and confined. It only deals with four types of acts and activities endangering national security. And the offenses are clearly defined in law. The legal principles uh, that we attach a lot of importance to, like presumption of innocence, uh, and uh, no retrospective uh, effect and so on, they are being upheld. The law respects and protects human rights as provided for under the basic law and relevant provisions in the two international covenants as applied to Hong Kong. So I would submit that instead of undermining people's freedom, the national security law will restore stability and helps ensure the great majority of Hong Kong people could exercise their rights and freedoms without being intimidated or attacked. So instead of spreading fear, the law actually remove fear and let Hong Kong people return to a normal, peaceful life. 